Hey, what's happening, guys? Like I said in my last 555 timer video, we're pretty much done talking about the theory and basics of the 555 timer. We're going to move on. Today, we're going to talk about the 556 timer, which is basically two 555 timers put together. So the 556 timer is simply two 555s in one IC. And if you kind of split it down the middle, you can see over here on the left side, we have discharge one, threshold one, control voltage one, reset one, output one, trigger one, and a ground. Then on side two, we have our VCC, our discharge for the entire IC, threshold two, control voltage two, reset two, output two, and trigger two. So what makes this chip better than a 555? Well, nothing really. Anything you can do with the 556 timer, you can also do with a 555 timer. In fact, the ratings are pretty much all the same. Um, let me find the absolute maximums here. Maximum supply voltage is 18 volts. Maximum output current is 225 volts milliamps but when we want to get right down to it it behaves the same as a 555 operated around 8 and 9 volts and keep your uh, output to under 200 milliamps draw and it'll behave quite well so like I said any circuit you can do with two 555's you can do with one 556 what simply makes it easier is fewer wires you've got one VCC one ground and discharge so three wiring for the chip to the rest of the circuit as opposed to having six that's about it it has some internal bypass so you don't have to worry about the frequency of one timer affecting the frequency of the other timer so let's talk about our circuit for today and it is a sequential timer so what we have is our 556 set up as two monostable 555s. We have a resistor and a capacitor controlling the timing for one side, a resistor and a capacitor controlling the timing for the other side. We have an LED for one output, an LED for the other output, and we have a resistor and a push button switch to trigger it and it would probably trigger a lot better if I actually drew the line my bad that goes to pin 6 pin 6 is trigger number 1 so what is going to happen when you press this button this resistor is going, or this capacitor which charged up is going to discharge through our threshold and control voltage and light this diode, this LED, for a certain period of time based on your RC here. When it goes out, we've connected pins 5, which is output 1, and ground, which is trigger 2. So when this goes out, it's going to trigger the other side of the circuit which has this charge capacitor which will now discharge allowing this LED to light. It's not complicated at all. The only interconnect between the two sides is right here. Pins 5 and 8 and we've got a little 0 0.01 microfarad capacitor in there as a bypass. Let's take a look at the circuit on the breadboard. Alright so pin 14 is our VCC and pin 7 there that's our ground now here's our switch we have a, a 10k pull-up resistor on the switch and when we press it it is going through this blue wire here over to pin 6 to ground it and activate this 100k resistor and this 100 microfarad capacitor which will set up our RC timing and light this LED when it goes out, we're going to ground 
this uh, it, this trigger over here on the other side, and this RC with a 100K and a 2200 microfarad capacitor will discharge, allowing that LED to light. See, it's pretty simple. Two 555 timers put together. And if you want to think about it, there's that circuit for an A-stable 555. There is your RC timing. And, well, they didn't put a switch on here, but you will put a switch. There it is, input onto the trigger to activate it. We've simply done that twice and jumped from pin 5, which is our output here, over to the trigger here on pin 8. Let's take a look at it in action. Okay, so now we've got the theory out of the way. We understand all the pinouts. Here it is in action. When I press the button, the first side of the 556 timer will go into action in monostable mode. It will light this red LED for approximately 10 seconds. When it goes out, it will flip over here, trigger the other side, and light the blue LED for, I don't know, I think about 15, 20 seconds. Anyway, let's find out. 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000, 6, 1,000, 7, 1,000, 8, 1,000, 9, 1,000, 10, 1,000, 11, 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000, 6, 1,000, 7, 1,000, 8, 1,000, 9, 1,000, 10, 1,000, 11, 1,000, 12, 1,000, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 20. Well, as you can see, this one stays on significantly longer than the other side. And that's controlled simply by a bigger transform or a capacitor. So what was that, about 30 seconds? Anyway, a cool circuit. It will allow you to turn it on and then have time to say get out of the way or to set something up before the actual circuit itself what you're trying to accomplish goes off and now these are um, 100k timing resistors here and uh, this is a 2200 this is a 100 both microfarad all you have to do is adjust your capacitors to change the timing sequence for the circuit. And that is really all there is to it. A pretty cool circuit if you ask me. And like I said, I wouldn't do the 555 anymore. 556 a whole is a whole different IC. <laughs> anyway, if you guys enjoyed this, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment and share and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all my patrons out there who help keep this channel going. If you're not a patron, consider joining. There's a link down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. That's it. I'm out. Peace.